South Africa's historic journey from an apartheid state to a multiracial democracy is one of the most important stories of the 20th century. And a key, if not the key figure of that experience is Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Today, he celebrates his 90th birthday. So here's a quick recap from the festivities at the George's Cathedral in Cape Town. United States President Joe Biden released a statement congratulating Tutu on his 90th birthday and in part saying, and I quote, the world first came to know Archbishop Tutu as he modeled the highest tenets of his faith and in challenging the injustice of apartheid in South Africa. This, his courage and moral clarity at the time helped inspire my own commitment as a United States Senator to change American policy towards the apartheid regime in South Africa. And in the years since, the world has continued to learn from Archbishop Tutu's message of justice, equality, and reconciliation. And who better to talk about this than his very own daughter? She joins me tonight, the Reverend Nantombi Naomi Tutu. Thank you so much for joining us live from Cape Town, South Africa. Thank you for having me. First off, I have to say happy birthday to your father and your family. It's a celebration for you all. Uh, it's great to see <laughs> Archbishop Tutu staying so healthy. Yes, he is doing well. I mean, he's obviously weaker that he's in. Mm. He is in a wheelchair but he was able to enjoy the celebration and he was very moved by all the messages he received. Yeah, you can still see and tell he has that fire within him to do right and promote justice for all. But I know, I'm sure you get this question all the time, but how would you describe your father's legacy? I think that the legacy is one that we see in so many people around the world who have this commitment to our common humanity. And we see it in the young people who are activists around um, climate change. We see it in South Africa and on the African continent with the young people who are determined to have full democracy and human rights in, in their countries. We see it in the US, I think, with the Black Lives Move, the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, we see it around the world, anywhere where people are raising their voices for, for justice and, as I said, our shared humanity. Mm. And I know, you know, besides the things that you mentioned, some people might only know him from his involvement with the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa and later as a chairman of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which is one of the places that I had the opportunity to meet him. But he has been also very outspoken about gay rights, among other issues. Why is that important to him? And how does he pick and choose which thing he decides to stand behind? So, I mean, the you know, the, in terms of LGBTQI+, that has been a part of um, my father's passion um, for justice, that, mm -hmm. um, that we can, nobody can be free until all of us are free. None of us have full human rights until all of us have full human rights. So it isn't, it isn't so much that he picks and chooses. It is more that he, when issues come up, when he hears of things, that, the, that his policy is, is this about the right of human beings to be valued fully as made in God's image? And so when he talks about gay rights, it is clearly in that human rights, the right for pe all people to, be, to live fully into the life that God had planned for them. Um, when he talks about um, liberation in Palestine, it is from that exact same position. When he says that um, the war on terror 
will never be won simply militarily. It is, again, because of his belief in the innate, um, innate worthiness of each and every human being to be seen as being made in God's image. Mm, I love that message. I love to hear him talk about it. You can, it's just, uh, you get, I guess, inspired and motivated yourself to do better, to do more when you hear him talk about these things. And although he's 90 years old, like I said, the fire is still keeping going in him and he's very busy with your family foundation. But what are some of the, the cases and causes that the family foundation works with? So the Family Foundation is, is specifically geared towards encouraging people to carry on this legacy, as I talked about, yeah. of Ubuntu. Um, we are human by through our connection with other human beings. And so the Legacy Foundation offers opportunities for young people um, to, to, to study the legacy, the work, um, of my father and others in the anti-apartheid struggle and the human rights struggle in general around the world. Um, it is right now focused on speaking truth to power, um, speaking of no future without justice and calling for the raising of voices around the world um, to, to call those in power, to call our political leadership to account and to, to hold them, if you will, to hold their feet to the fire, to be about justice, um, whatever their role in government or uh, economic leadership might be. Mm. I want to ask you this because I know we talk a lot about his work and everything he does and his work continues to go on with, you know, HIV and health and different things like that. But at, on a personal level, we want to get to know about him as a person. I don't think people realize how funny he is. Every time I'm with him, he always has a joke and some wisdom for me. But uh, as his daughter, what was it like growing up with, you know, someone so amazing and who is a living legend in your family? Yeah, I, you know, the, the, when I think about what my parents offered us um, as we were growing up, I, what, what is most striking for me is the, the, that our home was a place where we got to interact with amazing um, people who became leaders in, in South Africa and the world, um, that we got to know when they were young students um, people like Bani Pijana, like Steve Biko, that we got to hear these people learning and speaking and encouraging and challenging one another. And, and that, that experience was one that encouraged us to challenge our, ourselves and, and to encourage one another. I mean, I think that, you know, the sense of the sense of humor is is definitely something that um, has been a part of <laughs> our experience. Though my, my children now say, um, the grandchildren say that, you know, he has a limited number of jokes. And so they will look <laughs> at one another when he tells a joke and say, oh, isn't that joke 24? Ooh. I think we've heard it before. <laughs> right, right. What do you, do know, you have? Grand, grandchildren, grandchildren bring you back to reality. <laughs> that's true, and we only have a few seconds left, but is there any uh, mem memory that really stands out, a great memory or even a joke that he's told, you know, that stands out throughout your life so far? I think for me, the thing that stood out was when my father went um, into the crowd that was getting ready to, to kill somebody who they had identified as a spy. And um, and that, for me, it was striking in two ways. One, that my father took that step. And I was so proud to be able to call myself his daughter on that day. But the other was that the people in the crowd were willing to listen to him, given what everybody had gone through under apartheid, that people were still willing to accept the leadership of somebody who said, my stance is nonviolence. Um, and so that is a memory that will stay with me always. It is one that I share with my children, with friends, that um, 
that that was the courage that it took for him to do that, the love that people had for him, that they were willing to listen and um, and what that spoke about in terms of our struggle. Wow, such a great memory and a model for us all. Thank you so much, Reverend Tutu. And you know what? We didn't get enough time to talk. We need more time. So we're going to have to actually get you back on and talk about the important contributions that you're actually providing to social justice. So if you agree, we'll definitely have to have you back on. <laughs> Thank you. I would love that. Okay. Thank you so all right. Much. So we'll see you soon then. Okay. And tell your father happy birthday okay. from all of us. All right. And be sure, everybody at home, we want to hear from you. So join the conversation. Head over to our BNC Instagram and Twitter pages to let us know how you feel and any of impact that, of course, Archbishop Tutu has had on your life. And of course, don't forget to go to our website, bnc.tv, and subscribe to our YouTube page to check out clips from the show.